Hello and welcome to the Blue Waters webinar series. Uh, I'm Scott Lathrop at the National Center for Superfeeding Applications and we welcome you to uh, today's uh, webinar topic. Uh, this is being presented by Robert Smith, a research associate and a member of the scientific software development team at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Today's topic, Introduction to the Eclipse Advanced Visualization Project. With that, thank you for uh, joining us today, Robert, and I'll turn it over to you. Hello, uh, and I'm going to be talking about the uh, Club Advanced Visualization Project today. So a little outline of what we're going to be doing in the seminar. I'm going to give you a brief introduction to Eclipse, what it is, some motivations for why we would want to use Eclipse for scientific visualization, then I will go over the uh, visualization services we have in the EAVP, graph plotting, uh, vivid pair view, our geometry and F editors, as well as the API for how you would use this in a program of your own. And I uh, talk a little bit about uh, setting up remote connections. And then I talk about where we are going with the project in the future. So, what is Eclipse? Well, you may know Eclipse as an integrated development environment, something you open up when you want to do Java, but it's a lot more than that, really. Uh, there's the Eclipse Foundation, which is a, a nonprofit uh, organization for the development of Eclipse and the community around it. And, and that features things uh, such as the working group that includes the scientific working group that uh, EAVP is a part of. Uh, and there are a com entire open source community around Eclipse that uh, focuses on using Eclipse not just as an IDE, although that is a big part of it, but uh, also uh, rich client uh, platform apps that can that use uh, the Eclipse de development environment for things uh, beyond just coding. So in our case, uh, scientific workflows. Uh, and we also have, as I said, the scientific working group that focuses on specifically science with Eclipse. So uh, the Eclipse Foundation does include uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory as well as other uh, industry leaders, uh, projects, uh, uh, companies, and such are, uh, are all being supported uh, by at different levels by individual and developers. Uh, you know, to large uh, corporations, and we, in each project, we would have a different uh, focus for that might interest people. So, for example, EAVP came from uh, the uh, I, uh, the Eclipse computational environment project, which we'll talk about a bit in the future. So, the Eclipse workbench. Uh, it was used this way because of the open service gateway initiative that has this model or package management so that if you want to write your own rich client platform app, all you need to do is create your own RFCI bundle or bundles and package them into the app and all of the code will be picked up and automatically run and integrated into Eclipse so that you can have all of this uh, uh, business logic of yours uh, handled inside of Eclipse's framework. And of course, this is all open source and written in Java. So, why, given all this, why would we want to do scientific visualization in Eclipse? Well, if you think about it, if, uh, visualization is really only the last part of the scientific workflow. You have the entire thing going from writing your code to running a job, to getting the uh, result of that job back, and then finally visualizing your um, data that you have gotten. And it would be really, very nice if we could centralize all of that into a single program so that we could do things, for example, such as uh, checking, your error, checking for errors in your input before launching the job, uh, and then we could also uh, have them all streamlined so that things that a scientist might have to do, you know, by hand in a, a command line argument could be done with the Eclipse uh, UI. So, and that's all great. Then that well, how we came by uh, the Eclipse computational environment or ICE project that has all of this 
scientific workflow uh, done in them. But if you think about it, that is not really the only uh, reason you would want to visualize files in Eclipse. Uh, you might have a variety of different reasons you want to you know, pop open a file in Eclipse and be able to see what you've done. So uh, Marine Tech, uh, Bosch uh, have both looked at this for geography and engineering, as well as a few other, other companies. And this is where the ideal to pull out just the visualization specific code into its own Eclipse project through the scientific working group was created. And that is where the EAVP came in. So EAVP is uh, like these other um, Eclipse LFGI plugins uh, have a bunch of different features for visualization that you can use for each specific case. So we have a flexible API that you can use for, again, any depending on which kind of visualization you can do. We do have a standard for using any of them in the same way. And we also have the visualization in a variety of formats from the default Eclipse FWT to embedding JavaFX to even using a third-party visualization program to run the visualization and then pump that back into Eclipse. And all of this code is published as a P2 repository that you can just draw into your RCP app and run it that way so that uh, you can just take whatever you want, put it into your program, and the Eclipse OFGI framework will do all of the background uh, work needed to get this all up and running for you in your app so that you can plug it in and uh, go and just get your uh, uh, composite that has the visualization inside and do whatever you like with it. So uh, each, a little bit more about the uh, specifics of the API. Each visualization is implemented in its own OFGI bundle. And these can be uh, in a hierarchy of getting more specific. So for example, we have the uh, geometry uh, bundle and, and, and then the geometry JavaFX bundle, which is the specific implementation of the geometry editor using JavaFX. And then each of these will have a, their own IVIV service. And then we also have an IVIV service factory that we'll take a look at later that allows the app to uh, list all of the IVIV services. And using that, you can select what kind of service you want. So if you have, say, two different services that can open the same file, you can get the service that have that uh, file that is able to handle that file type and then offer the user the selection of which one of those they want. And uh, this is not, also not uh, married entirely to the OFGI. You can also do this through the Eclipse uh, 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 extension points that allow you to uh, more programmatically uh, get the services you want outside of an OFGI context. And uh, these models also uh, uh, extend the uh, Eclipse preferences menu so that you can give your user preferences for the uh, services. So, for example, uh, where they, the uh, connection to the third party program is. So, I'm going to show you a little bit of the code for EAVP now. Uh, so that we can get some more specifics. So, as I said, we have our IVIV service factory, and you can see how uh, the, the, we do that. It's very simple to get the service by the name and to get a list of all services. And the services are registered through the OFGI uh, uh, framework so that you don't have to bother. Uh, get, uh, registering all of these things and collecting them into this one class. You can just get your IVA service factory singleton and, and pull your services from that. And uh, taking a look at the services themselves, we have the IVA service interface. And you can see how you, we can create uh, canvases out of geometry objects or uh, accepting them through uh, getting the uh, 
URI to a file to create the plot that we want to look at. And the difference here is that uh, plots are for uh, mostly uh, post-processed uh, uh, visualization, so things like Vivid or uh, pair of you mostly, where you are only looking at data. And then we, the IVIS Canvas is a subclass uh, that does more uh, editing, so uh, pre-processing visualization that you're actually editing what you're looking at, or ha at least have the capability to. And then we also have a connection viv service that's a uh, subclass for uh, setting up connections. So we have an iViv connection manager that will uh, get all your connections from the Eclipse Workbench uh, through uh, the AVB uh, preference menu extensions, and then that with how it will uh, grab what the user has set up for the uh, connect the remote connection and use it in the creation of the plot. And with once you have your plot from the service, you have some uh, UI stuff. But the most important part is the. Uh, uh, that it, you can use this to draw into a composite, and the composite is what you are actually going to be putting into your app. That that is the the uh, basic class for FWT that will have the uh, visualization drawn inside. So if you are wanting to create your own uh, service to extend the AVP and put your own visualization engine inside. Basically, all you have to do is create your own IVIS service and iPlot, and these will allow you to uh, say, uh, offer the user the ability to uh, set and uh, create these plots automatically and open up your visualization. And another uh, uh, thing to mention is that when you are our basic this service factory interface uh, uh, implementation does automatically register your plot editor for these plots as the default for inside of Eclipse as editor. So when you just open up a file and double click in it in the product explorer, you can actually just have the user immediately get your visualization. So moving back, as I said, uh, visualizing a file, you just have to hand it to the service. The service will create the plot or the canvas as uh, specific to your service, and then you can draw that to a composite. And using that, you will have your visualization. And as I was talking about a little bit before, you don't have to ha necessarily have your visualization local to your machine. You can also have a remote visualization where, for example, you have your Eclipse RCP app with EAVP sitting on one computer, and you have your visualization on some kind of dedicated visualization cluster uh, that you're connected to over the web. And what, uh, using the connection viz service I showed you before, you will be able to uh, just stream over your data to the visualization engine, and then it will send back over a image that is drawn to the composite. So to the, so uh, basically all of our remote visualizations are done this way through a HT, uh, through an, a uh, socket. So even if you do have, in this case, for example, Paraview and Eclipse running on the same machine, what we do is in any case, we just connect through it over a socket and send the uh, third-party visualization program's uh, output to our uh, to a clip that way. So, and here you can see one uh, one of the preferences menu for, might look like. So, you have some basic things, you know, what machine you're connecting to, the port and such, and then just. A, uh, a a path to the uh, executable you want to run. So 
this is all done through Parallel Tools Platforms uh, Connections. So uh, that's a Parallel Tools Platform is another Eclipse project mostly used uh, for uh, supercomputers uh, that have uh, you know connection, connecting, debugging, that kind of thing that are also integrated into Eclipse. And the, each of the and any of these connections that you want to set up can be set up to open automatically. So the user doesn't have to worry about you know connecting each and every time. This is something you can do once, and then after that, they just open up your RCP app every time, and the scientist or uh, other user no longer have to worry about the details. They can just start you know double clicking their files. And they, that's to, and hopefully that gives them a very good experience, and they can go ahead and just do their science. So uh, these are. So let's get into some of the specific uh, uh, services uh, EAVP offers. So we have uh, 2D plotting with uh, the FWC XY graph, and this is some pretty basic CSV or data files. Uh, plotting on a two-dimensional graph, uh, we do try to automatically guess the delimiter, uh, but uh, yeah. and we also have uh, the ability to do other things with this, you know, some basic, you know, set, changing the uh, data while in, in a different tab so that if you want to make changes, and you can go ahead, you can switch over to the, the uh, data tab and then switch back to and see uh, how that looks in the graph. And here you can see a screenshot of a CSV file. You can see how we have a bunch of different uh, a series uh, graphed all here and it's some option for you know, zooming and such up in the upper left. And then a sort of meteor example, example is Vivid and Paraview. The Liva two programs are kind of the state of the art when it comes to a scientific visualization. Both open source and they these are both scale very well, uh, even up to HPC data. So the, it's uh, whatever, whatever you're doing, these are some very good uh, uh, things for you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, each of these are uh, downloaded and installed separately from Eclipse, but as I said before, these aren't necessarily on the same machine. So, uh, you, but, but uh, once you have your uh, Vivid and Paraview, uh, where you can configure EAVP to connect to them, and then they will launch in the background, and you can uh, communicate to them over a socket to get your visualization done and you get back the uh, results. So the with the, and now I was talking about with the uh, uh, default editors from our IVA server factory. Once you have uh, this all set up, you can pass it a file, and in this case, it might just be double clicking on it in the product explorer, and that will open up the. Uh, the uh, plot editor, which will send in the file to Vivid and Paraview over the web, and then have that do its standard uh, visualization and kind of pull back the uh, image file the output and display that on the screen. So, uh, and also in a moment, you this will also have a user input integrated so that you can do things. So that you could do in normal uh, Vivid or Paraview, clicking and dragging to change the camera, switching what uh, series you're looking at, that kind of thing. So uh, I'll show you that. So here in our item database, we have some files. So let's see, here's a file file. Uh, we click that, it, uh, the plot editor is selected as the default, and it shows that there are two different services that can handle this tire.file file that I'm opening. So I selected Vivit, and as you can see, we now have this file open inside of Eclipse. So 
we have some different options here. We can change what we're looking at. So here I'm switching to the cluster, and you can see how we now have it. we're now displaying the color map for the cluster variable on the visualization of the tire. We also have some uh, uh, basic uh, UI controls, and this is a very stripped down version of Vivid, as you may know if you've ever worked with it. But uh, this is uh, a very uh, basic idea of what a domain scientist might want to very quickly look at if they just want to do sanity checking on their, you know, uh, results, or if they want to see their results quickly, but and without hassle. But if you do want to be more uh, advanced features that Vivid uh, allow for. We do have this Python uh, interface the button that will open up a Python cell, and this will allow you to send uh, Python uh, commands directly to Vivid. So you have your one level of basic visualization just opening the file, seeing, uh, selecting a series to put it on, over the uh, Mess, or if you want your more and you, you see something that you want to investigate further, if you want to make a nicer looking screenshot for uh, some kind of press release, you can also open up this and then you pretty much have the full power of Vivid available inside of Eclipse. And we do also load these from a file if you want to have these pre created. Right. And then You'll see that uh, Paraview works very similarly. And in this case, we have a we have an animation because we have multiple time steps worth of data in this file. So just like in Vivid, you, you we have this animation that can run. So we will step to the animation here and in this case we have a mug that has been heated so you can see how the blue area is the coldest and the red at the bottom is moving up and up as time goes on as the entire mug is heated and in the same way we have uh, for vivid we can change the uh, camera and the uh, series that's being uh, shown and uh, just like in Vivid, how we have the Python, uh, we have the also have the Paraview Web Viewer integrated in. So, in, in the same way that if you want the full power of Vivid inside of EAVP, you go to Python scripting. Here, you can instead open the full visualizer inside of EAVP. And here, what we actually do is we open a server that has this normal web visualizer inside of it, and we have a uh, browser inside of Eclipse, that's the standard Eclipse browser, and open it up to that page. And well, along with your uh, files being uh, put inside of it here for you. Over and so here we can just open mug and file again, and you can see how we have the full array of Paraview uh, options available. And moving on to our next uh, service, we also have 3D modeling. So, uh, JavaFX have the uh, capability not just of doing uh, UI uh, widgets, but also of creating uh, the 3D graphics. And this is really uh, convenient because you don't have to have any uh, other uh, dedicated 3D library if you end up to use the Java JDK that it's shipped with, but this is really more intended for casual development. So it doesn't have a lot of features we might have in a more dedicated uh, graphics library, which makes this better suited for the real-time editing that you would do in an IVIS canvas. So, for example, if you want to be able to change the file as you're uh, uh, getting a, the model set up to submit for a job, this is the sort of uh, pre-processing visualization 
that you would do. So uh, we use the EF Eclipse which is a product, which is another uh, Eclipse project that integrates this, these uh, 3D graphics from JavaFX into Eclipse. Uh, it's been directly embedded into a composite and all of the user events are transparently forwarded from uh, FWT to uh, JavaFX so you can do things such as changing the camera. So the mesh editor is for a more 2D um, meshing, although in the future we do want to move this up to 3D meshing, and actually right now we do use 3D graphics, we're just uh, you know, locking the camera to a 2D plane. And basically what you do here is you create polygons for these meshes, and then you can move the polygons around and assign properties to them. So for example, we have fluid dynamics boundary connection for uh, fluid and thermal uh, boundaries or user custom boundaries right now. And uh, here's a screenshot of that. And to show you how this kind of stuff would all be integrated with the uh, different kind of editors. I, inside of uh, I, which is the integrated computational environment, we have the this NEC model, which is for NEC 5000, which is a fluid dynamics code. And integrated into that, you have this uh, mesh editor. Uh, switching over to the ICE perspective, and we are so. And so in, five, in NEC 5000, what you're generally doing is uh, creating a model of a pipe and simulating the uh, physics of what was happening as water is flowing through that uh, pipe. So here we have the pipe. You can see how we have different nodes and each part, each part of a different polygon. The polygons are all listed over here on the left in the mesh element perspective. And when if you click on a polygon, it is uh, lit up here in the uh, mesh so that you can see what part of the mesh you're editing. And here in the properties view on the bottom, you can see for each uh, polygon or each part of a polygon, you do have their own set of properties. So here you can see the fluid and thermal boundary conditions for this section of the pipe that have their own values and these are all adaptable and then this is an example of how you are uh, doing a uh, pre-processing visualization so before you do it, any job or uh, can make any calculations you're setting up your model and then uh, what we do is write our output here and then using that output we also have the uh, it, we have the generated input file that was made in part from that uh, mesh editor, and then we have this set up for our job, so we can go ahead and launch it. And you can see the job running with the model be just created and then that pulls back all of the and then ice pulls back all of the files yeah so there that goes and then if we switch back to our other view we can see how we pull back all of this the files and in particular we have a, a visualization file somewhere in here I think and then when we open this, we can, you can see how Vivid opens up automatically. And we can see the results of just what we did. So you can see how the velocity of the, of the liquid flowing through the pipe that from the model we set up and different things such as temperature, you can see how the temperature changes as the water, as the, as the bar flows through, and 
this is how it would, this is using vivid as a kind of as a post processing visualization. So you can see sort of the idea behind having all of these integrated into the same uh, package. So that you have the math editor for pre-processing, yeah, they set up your model and then just it for post-processing so that you can see a more detailed view of what exactly you got back from your code and the job you ran. And then in addition to the math editor, we also have a geometry editor that's for 3D structures. Uh, this is all based on a constructive solid geometry tree. So, for example, you can do things like take the unions of these shapes. And we do provide some basic shapes, some like a sphere and a tube and such. But the main use of this is for importing files so that you can visualize them. And we use support a large uh, variety of objects, so FDL, OBJ, Wavefront, OBJ, BTK, MPL, IGF. And these are all done through uh, the, uh, the through Xtext uh, DSL, so that's uh, domain-specific languages that are automatically generated by a project called Xtext. And each of these uh, domain-specific languages well, is created for a different uh, file type reading that specific format and then provide all of these are provided to the geometry editor through Eclipse extension point so that we can very easily add a new file types as the need arises and all of this have actually been moved out of the AVP into a new uh, Eclipse project called January just in the same way EAVP was pulled out from ICE so these uh, uh, these uh, file readers are all part and moved into this uh, scientific working group uh, data type uh, project name January. And here you can see just a, an example of a, uh, a uh, what is it? it's a part of a uh, uh, welding uh, so uh, centering uh, showing how this can be changed after a, how this uh, material is being deformed after being heated. And then you can see another one here we have that's using the constructive solid geometry to have to have all of these different parts of a slot machine that's being modeled together inside of this one union of states. So I'll now open that up and show you how to switch to the uh, ice perspective again and then opening up a geometry editor and you can see how we can add primitive shapes that these aren't too exciting so get rid of that and we're going to import a File. So, for example, we have the uh, for, uh, there it is. So you can see how we've imported this heatsink file, and what this does, uh, and you can see it being displayed in the geometry editor. And then when you go to the properties view, you can see various data from this. So we can, for example, set the center to move this about the space, or we can set the change the actual mass data, or or even or just display it. And then you can also see how we can change the color. So moving that up. A little faster, so you can change the colors. You can set the scale if you want to make it larger, or switch it to wireframe. And each of these is optional, so you can switch this off. And if we had a a case where you had a you were taking advantage of the constructive solid geometry tree, you have multiple 
uh, saved the fight of the same union. This is how you would have you would color the entire union or let uh, or uh, delegate that to individual parts of it. So yeah. Right, so that covers basically what we have now with the uh, creation uh, with the set so setting up your own uh, program and with the ones we have already. So uh, just talking about to this a bit, you would be able to, for example, optionally if you wanted your own visualization service, you would to set your you would create your own uh, OFDI package that would could be part of EAVP, and then, and since this is an open source project, you would be able to actually contribute that to us and, you know, do it back to the project if you wanted to, or not. But either way, you would you would then be able to pull EAVP in through the P2 uh, site for your uh, or, or for your Eclipse RCP app. And then once you have that and have all the for, and the packages as a part of your product, you would have all these uh, services that I just showed you for Vivid and Paraview, JavaFab, CFB, and all of this would be part of your program. So uh, moving forward, and what we would like to do is be able to have a little bit more interoperability with Python. So for example, we saw some of that in Vivid, but we would like to really be able to you know, generically call EAVP from Python so that in of a Python program, you could get all of these visualizations uh, just through regular Python scripting. And we'd really like to move this beyond just Eclipse RCP in the future and allow the EAVP visualizations to be able to be put into other uh, windowing toolkits, so Bodden, Swing, JavaFX, all of the we were we're currently working on getting on um, refactoring uh, EAVPs. Uh, it, pardon me. Yeah, refactoring EAVPs API so that we have all this generic concept of just a draw drawable unit, and you are drawing the visualizations to this unit, and then that unit can be depending on your specific program and FWT. Uh, composite a button layout, uh, any of these things, so that you can show that just like how we were pulling out EAVP uh, scientific visualization from just ICE to do work for all uh, Eclipse RCP apps, we would like to pull this out again and allow it to function in a very general case where you are where you can have abstracted away all of the uh, specific references to any specific windowing system and allow it to run in any of these. Uh, we'd also like to offer some other graphical engine implementations for our services. We used to have a originally a lightweight uh, Java gaming library implementation of the geometry and mess editors that have been, since been uh, uh, no longer supported because of copyright, but we would like to be able to offer that uh, or other uh, implementations. We'd also like to do some individual visualization support so that instead of just doing pre-processing or processing or post-processing, you could be able to hook into a running job and visualize and get back visualizations as you are doing the calculation. Yeah. Pardon me. So, so to do some uh, sanity checking. So if you get your job 10% of the way done, and you can see the visualization and you're getting back values that don't make any sense. You can help your job and go back and debug things instead of waiting, basically waiting until the very end and wasting that entire uh, time. And uh, we'd also like to move the mess editing into the allowing 3D editing and a better finite element support. And uh, also working on a paper for this. And I'd like to first of all thank my uh, research sponsors uh, and uh, co colleagues at ORNL. So that includes JJ Billings, Alex McAfee, Greg Watson, and Nara Kovkanova. 
uh, we'd also like to talk, say, thank uh, Sandia National Lab- Laboratory for uh, collaborating on the Sandia Analysis Workbench. And I'd like to th- thank uh, Kim Cliff for uh, working with our SFT uh, shard visualization uh, server, which we are still working on integrating in the EVP uh, and that should be coming out soon. Now we have a branch of that, and we're just working on getting it uh, integrated into Next and ready for the A service. And uh, for it to lead lab for collaboration on the JavaFX geometry editor. So, uh, do we have any questions? Well, thank you, Robert, for your presentation. Uh, we've, we'll see if there are any questions arise on the Slack channel. Uh, in the meantime, let me ask if people want to learn more about Eclipse, are there training resources or other ways they can get help, support, training, et cetera? Uh, yeah, so, so uh, I was going to get to that. So uh, for EAVC specifically, we do have the EAV product page. We have the GitHub repo and its documentation. And we also have a uh, tutorial of our own for getting started with consuming these services into your own app. But uh, Eclipse generally, we, the, the Eclipse Foundation does have Eclipse.org, which has its own uh, documentation. And there's also the very excellent uh, set of tutorials by uh, Vogella that uh, is extremely uh, high quality and is, uh, I would say, the probably the finest uh, way for anyone who is new to Eclipse and wants to get started with it to learn about Eclipse and or the OFGI framework. Excellent. And then are there any uh, gotchas or things you would advise people to be cautious of when they're getting started? Anything that you trips people up? Well, I would say that the uh, probably the biggest uh, change is going from maybe a different kind of Java programming into a clip is that you really have to think of this as uh, you know a program that has a lot of different hooks into each other so that if for example you're consuming an OFGI service in your RCP app or or uh, let me so, sorry I got that backwards if you are creating an OFGI package to be consumed by uh, something else in the framework there are multiple ways that you have to specify that so you have to uh, get that into your manifest file. You have to create the uh, XML uh, declarations of those services, and you have to put that into your build properties. And and once you have all of that ready, then you have to uh, make sure that your product file and that you're building from uh, also includes those server that package and have it auto started. So I would say that that is probably one of the largest. Uh, uh, barrier for anyone who's starting out with EAVP just because uh, there are so many different points of failure. So uh, I, my advice is if you're having a problem with this kind of thing to uh, you know take a look at uh, your services and make sure that all your ducks are in a row with all the different uh, ways you have to specify these things. Uh, very good, thank you. Um... I don't see any other questions coming in, so I think we'll uh, go ahead and uh, stop at this point. Thank you very much, Robert, for the great presentation. We very much appreciate you taking time to uh, give us a good overview of Eclipse. I'll let the uh, uh, viewers know the next webinar is coming up. Uh, September 20th will be Swift T by Justin Wozniak. And then on September 27th, uh, Jeff Carver will talk about software engineering practices. Uh, we appreciate your participation. Uh, you'll s- soon get a link to the, uh, the video uh, when it's posted uh, on YouTube and a short survey. We always appreciate your feedback and suggestions for how we can make these webinars more useful to you. Thank you. Thank you, Robert.